Victor Armstrong to win the Tour of France. I'll try before we go to the Tour of Spain. Probably give me until the Champion of Zurich to give you perhaps a tip because uh, David, I think his name is, in my local pub, the Checkers, got a, got a bet on Armstrong to win the Tour of France. Again, what, 16 to 1. 16 to 1. <laughs> So I've been welcomed in the pub and he bought me a pint. 16 to 1. I'll try and do the same for you on the Tour of Spain, but not until the Champions of Zurich, because I'm not sure of the, the field yet. And I want to see how the form of these riders is coming on. But this man, Zola, here you watch him go. He is really determined this year. He had his problems last year. He's come back. I've always admired this classy rider. He's reminded me of the old days of uh, Ray Booty, those who are interested in time trial. See, look at him. Look, this great big chest, the thin arms, the langy legs, and that's a bit like the old boat Ray Booty. Well, here we are on this big climb. This is the moment now as Hulo starts to move off the front for the uh, uh, the La Française de Jeu. He's been put up there too by his strong, hard-working team, including Britain's Max Chandry. It's all beginning to blow apart the seams. And when they get over the top of this final climb of the day, there'll be 30 kilometres down to San Sebastian. The question is, who can pull this together? Who's going to get down the other side? Who's going to win the stage? They certainly are ripping it to pieces after those 15 men went away. And one by one, they've been sucked back into the main pack. And this is the man who won it last year. Casa Grande starting to go too. All the way up this climb. And it's going to be anybody's race because when they come out of the big tours, nobody knows exactly what the form is like. Some of them go and ride the special criterion. Some of them just go soft tapping and putting in the miles, ready for a big event like this one. But in reality, this race is still anybody's race. I've not uh, seen anything of uh, Mr Ulrich, and I don't think really it's his cup of tea or bottle of Rioja, as the case may be, uh, as Casa Grande starts to ride off the front here. Looking back then to see what damage he's been doing, we're getting so many attacks, and Hulo's been on the attack, Zilla's been on the attack, Casa Grande's been on the attack, as they've been pulling back the remnants of that 15-man breakaway group to set the whole thing alight on this San Sebastian, San Sebastian Classic. Just looking to see the damage has been done further back because certainly Varong started to move well, but he's missed the move now. His team were doing a tremendous amount of work. Well, Ellie just sitting on the wheels. I don't think he's going to do much work yet. There's Castigrandi still at the front. There's Perron. One, two, three, four back from the front. Tonkov not far behind in Silver Mappe. One of good, good, good strength of Mappe. Well, Tonkov had to go out to the Tour of France, you may remember, and his uh, father in law died. He was just coming to form. He'd had tummy trouble before. And I think again we might see Tonkov riding in the Tour of Spain because he had, wasn't able to complete the Tour de France. I'm just looking forward to that, the, that race this year. It starts, I said to you earlier on, by the, at Mercia on September the 4th. You can actually fly from Great Britain dead easy down to Mercia, an airport there. So I want to go down and spend the weekend watching the start of the, the Tour of Spain because it all happens very close to Mercia to begin. It runs up towards the, uh, Alicante, Benidorm, and then cuts across to Albuquerque. And it's not difficult to take in some of the early stages. I think we're going to see one of the best races for a long time. But look at the way these chaps are racing now. That's interesting, because kind of, just Hulo, there's Tonkov. There's one or two riders that are just riding the scene to be within themselves, trying to burn people off the back. I think that's Geras just going through for the Kelma Costa Blanca team. Have a quick look again, 162. In fact, it is Alberto Geras in the green pants, just sitting in there, just behind Veron, wearing number 52. And that's Ellie, just there for Telecom. Follow on behind the Benesto rider. And that, in fact, is in our piccoli. 26 seconds. Casa Grande is doing all the work. He's so determined. He got this race last year. He and Axel Merckx. In fact, Piopoli, who was in this group, he was third last year. So he's, going, he's no stranger to this part of the course. Oh, oh, that really has ripped it apart, it seems. Tonkov's now got to go with this little group. It's broken up completely.
They've been racing for nearly 200 kilometres. They've done something like 110, 115 miles since we started out. And now they're really rolling. It's a big rolling fast track. You see right from the distance there, those masts. That's where it goes up to. And it just, it goes up whilst a helicopter shot showed it snaking backwards and forward. It's not one of those sort of uh, gut-busting climbs where it's like going up a wall. It just keeps on going and going. And when you've been riding nearly thick at 120 miles, and it certainly begins to hurt the legs. That's what's happening now. Tonkov off on his own. That's him on his screen. Well, that's interesting. He left it a bit late, I thought, and if only somebody like Veronka had been with him too, but he's just riding up here very strongly. And if we get that four-man group together at the top, Casa Grande, uh, winner last year, Pierpoli, third last year. There's a lot of indecision back in the group. Certainly, the, the Mapoi boys won't, won't chase. Look, the chaps with the sort of multicolored blue and white and red clothing, they won't do anything about this one. And so it's left to Lotto, uh, left to onto Deutsche Bank field to try and do something for Alano, who's not with it at the moment. He's, he's sit there fairly well back. Jalabo's not racing this event, by the way. I don't know if you know, but he had a bit of a crash and uh, he's out of hospital now and has gone back home again. They suspect that he'll be okay to race in the Tour of Spain. So there's another man we didn't see in the Tour of France coming back for the Tour of Spain. Comes on the right hand side, the Italian national champion riding well for the Psycho team. Who've got a lot on Jufo? They're not. In fact, there's Jufo just behind the uh, move over it. <laughs> that in yellow and black Jufo is behind there in the red, and Camuso is doing a good job here, just sitting on the front, rolling along a bit, looking out for Jufo. But they've got to go somewhere to catch Casagrande. Who's doing all the work? Casagrande doing all the work. <coughs> now, you see down there on the right hand side. Well, that's the sea. Not S-E, but S-E-A. They're going to go up this climb, drop down to a big circuit and come back round again. So do a bit of a zigzag, a bit of a figure eight before they drop back in towards uh, San Sebastian. 44 seconds, is that going to be enough? Casa Grande is still on the front. Pierpoli from Benesto just behind him. Ellie's not doing anything. And there they are. Tremendous driving force of Casa Grande. Looking back to what damage he's done. Again, another these riders with enormous big chest, sucking lots of oxygen. That's what you need. There is Tonkov. It looks like there's one, two, three coming across to him. So he could be caught back. Somehow, unless that lead group get a good couple of minutes, there's enough talent here to suck them back in again. That's Pierpoli. It looks like he's blown. Surely he's gone. I think Casagrande's work at the front is just destroying the chasers. And there he is. And he's just got Ellie for company. Oh, and he's gone. <laughs> oh, dear me. Is there not a bike rider here who doesn't know that feeling when suddenly the gap opens up and you look at the wheel in front, you concentrate on the back tyre and suddenly it's gone and that's it. Well, as, as Casa Grande goes to the top, can I quickly also answer a query I had here from Mr. Collis in, in Epsom in Surrey, who, who wrote to me twice. He said, first try, 23rd of July, second try, 2nd of August. Sorry if the, things don't come through as we see Tonkov going away again on the right-hand side. He asked me a question. He said, who decided that the chain set should be on the right-hand side of the bicycle and the gear mechanism on the, on the right-hand side as you look down? In fact, left-hand side, you look at it now. Why should it be that side rather than the other side? Well... <clears throat> I don't know the actual answer, but I think I know it. I said, now we see, uh, in fact, that's not Tonkov, which is another one map here where I starting to go. Because, as you know, in Great Britain, we drive on the left-hand side of the road and, and the Continentals drive on the right-hand side of the road. So why should we have the chain sets on this particular side? And I think the answer is, before we had derailleur gears, before we had multi-gears, we used to have single fixed sprockets at the back. And if you look at um, the majority of threads, they're right-hand threads. And when you're pedaling on a, a single sprocket, a fixed sprocket, on a right-hand thread, it locks the sprocket up. So, for instance, here Casa Grande is pedaling, and all the motions going into his back uh, uh, gears. He's got, he got eight, uh, nine sprockets at the back there, by the way. And as he's riding on them, the actual drive will, will force his bike forward. But also, it's, it's riding the, the right-hand thread up against the, uh, the hub. So, in other words, it, it drives it in. And I think that's the reason we have it on the right-hand side.
So Mavic now come back up to Ellie because Casa Grande is down the road there. Uh, Ellie might have enough power left in his legs when he gets to the top of this climb to get back to Casa Grande, but I think Casa Grande needs more people with him. I don't think he can surely hang on, go down all the other way, because there is Piapoli blown out the back. And if I look at the result of, of, of last year, what happened then, um, Casa Grande towed Axel Merckx and Piapoli for the last 30 kilometres uh, to, to win the race. And uh, so he probably could still do it. And he went all the way through towards the finish. He's now trying to uh, do exactly the same thing again when he covered the uh, 232 kilometres in four hours, 43 minutes, 45 seconds last year with Merckx and Piapoli all same time in his wheel. But he, he's now got rid of them. And looking back here, let's see if any more people would like to get up to him. There's the dribs and drabs. That, I think that's Ulo moving forward. And I think that's still down Frankie down there. A lot of top talent. I think Casa Grande has got a, a bigger gap than, uh, and that could be Bogart going through. Sorry about this when I say could be because we're not getting information on our headphones and we're just picking up the riders going through, watching their style and looking at who should be there and who should be. That's a massive crowd. This is this is very big. We could, we could, we could, before we nip down the book and put a few Bob Mr. Casa Grande. Enough talent here <clears throat> to pull that thing back and we could be into, I want to say, a bunch sprint finish, but I've got a suspicion that gap is not enough yet. Anyway, going back to Mr. Collis and his... Uh, his, his, his fax and his emails are getting towards the top one kilometre to go. I do think then that probably when he's saying why do we have the chain set on the right hand side, it has to do with, with driving the back sprockets and days when it has single fixed gears to drive it into the hub because that's the way we had right hand threads on so many of our, our threads. There are very few threads that are left hand threaded by the way. We get uh, left hand threads on pedals and we get left hand threads on the bottom bracket cups because the way in which when you're pedalling you could have the pedal unwind itself so we do have left hand threads on the left hand pedals or the right hand pedal we've got left hand thread on one of the pedals we've got left hand thread on the bottom bracket as well but most, most threads are right hand threads and I think that's the reason that we drive on the right hand side here if it has nothing to do with riding on the right hand side of the road or whichever side of the road it might be I think it's to do with engineers many years ago wanting to make sure as you're riding with your, your single uh, chain it drove the sprocket up against the hub and didn't undo it and of course in, uh, in track racing when you had single fixed gears you had a right hand thread for the main sprocket but you had a left hand thread for the lock ring so it could and lock up against it and when you kick back on a single fixed gear it wouldn't fly off the hub so you also had left hand and right hand thread am i complicating life okay at least i think i've got the answer mr collis i told you it's a nice long steady drag going up toward the top of the climb without any real uh, back breaking but uh, gut busting nasty little hairpins on it so he's riding well but it does mean the group behind is quite capable of con containing itself and there we've gone over the top now let's see what that gap's going to be and i have a suspicion that uh, the back group behind might well come together as early starts to motor up there he's, he's going quick enough to catch him surely it's 30 kilometers to go off the top here that's just under 20 miles pretty well all downhill a little bit of a hiccup towards the end but generally speaking it's a pretty good run down towards the finish and there he goes and that's only what 18 seconds or 25 26 on your screen now it's Pierpoli that was originally in that breakaway group at the front looks like he's been sucked in and pulled out I think that's Hulo going with him now for La Française du Jeu well Pierpoli's taking a bit of a tow Yep, there he is. Oh, is that one minute going to be enough? Here we go, over the top for Bonesto. Now, Francis is up, you're low. One minute, I look at this pack. No, 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 they surely, 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 but the chase is really on here. That's going to come back together. There's a lot of top brass in there, and I think some of them are going to drive this one very hard indeed. Wow, that is some bunch. I didn't spot Lance Armstrong in that, by the way. He was together at the bottom of the climb with the rest of his lads, but uh, I think somehow anybody who's in that leading group is going to have their work cut out. Well, two things can happen now. One is that leading group will persist and stay away. Alternatively, they will catch the leaders and then sit up and just wonder who's going to do the work. And this, this little back group might try and get on, and this could well be Armstrong's group. No, nope, couldn't spot him there either. And that's been coming up towards two minutes. In fact, this I think is him. Yeah, it looks like Lance. Well, 
a forest he's been through since the Tour de France, flying back as a forth across the Atlantic and turning up for special races and, and celebrations. I think to stay within two minutes of the leader isn't that bad. And here comes a big pack too. They are absolutely motoring. A lot, I've, I've never seen it quite so compact as this before, or could be compact. I think that's it. Anybody who's off the back of that little group now, unless you're a demon descender, can say bye-bye to that one. The funny about being sucked in with the, the team cars, you can get back. So we've now got an <clears throat> interesting situation where this man, Casa Grande, is trying to do it all on his own. And behind him, then, little chase groups begin to form. Sorry about the pictures again. We have these little problems. So the chase is now on with the big group uh, coming down. There's enough riders here, I think, if they're determined to try and pull back uh, uh, breakaway rider Casa Grande. That slender lead at the top of the hill, I don't think it's enough, but stay with us to see if he manages to survive to the finish. Less than 30 k's to go. See, step into the future. Well, the chase is on. They've got some, uh, what, uh, less than 20 kilometers to go towards the finish of the San Sebastian, San Sebastian event. And uh, the one low man, Casa Grande, is still out there trying to hang on for grim death as the rest of the field are beginning to move after him. And uh, somehow I think that it could be a lonely task as far as he's concerned because some big hitters in the chase group. Here is on your screen, Casa Grande, winner last year of this race when he went away uh, with uh, the other two breakaway companions, Merckx and Pierpoli, and managed to get through to, uh, to take the race at the end of it all by the scruff of the neck he did it all on his own last time over the top of the uh, the climb he had a slender lead in fact i'll try and check back for you to see what his, his time gap was at the top of the climb over the top of the escabel last year and uh, it says that i'm just checking out now he went away uh, from 40 riders so it's about the same then and uh, only 18 second gap that's interesting he had only an 18 second gap with uh, with Merckx and Pierpoli over the top of the Escabel last year with some 30 k's to go and now he's gone over with, with the thick end about what, half minute and 40 seconds so he's got more in hand than he had last year and he towed Merckx and he towed Pierpoli in toward the finish last year so there may be a chance then you can see this is the route they've taken there over the top of that little climb at the end where it has that one here we go. They didn't go quite that fast. And there we are, 25 kilometers to go. And this is uh, common, well-known territory then for Casa Grande. This is what he did last year, but he did it with Merckx and he did it with Pierpoli. He towed them last year in toward the finish. And now he's got a bigger group behind him. Well, as big a group, there were 40 riders chased him down last year. And now let's see if they can get their act together this time on the way down. This man certainly won't do anything to chase him down because that's one of his teammates, and that was Donati, number three. And here he is for Vinnie Calderola, going very hard to the front. Also in the Vinnie Calderola team, we've got an Australian rider, uh, Matthew White, racing today. We might pick him up. You spot him back there. He's got number seven on his back. So this is familiar territory for the man himself out there at the front and running on in towards the finish. That's not quite... That's not into San Sebastian. That, that's this town we're going into at uh, Honda Riba. It runs through a long Honda Riba, then curls back round through Iron and then back in towards the finish. That's the unpronounceable town we're going to before we get to Honda Riba. And you can see once it gets down there, pretty flat. There's the little climbs after that of just the undulations which you get off the off the bay. I'm waiting to pick up the sight of those riders. I've just been looking back for his 1996 uh, when Udo Boltz um, came in to win the race. We had uh, what some uh, six riders including Ellie who's in this, uh, this group now uh, they all came in together to sprint it out the finish so that was when we had six men finish together with a back breakaway group uh, way back behind them the next uh, group came in. Oh, In fact there was some more riders only one second back we had a big big wadge of riders that year in fact Max Shandy was 16th that year in 1996 and they all came in uh, within uh, what uh, one second of the of the winner. So Euro Bolts brought a big group in, in in that year, 1996, and it could be the same thing that happened this year. Casagrande's just got to keep plowing along as as hard as he can uh, can do. 
back in 1995 when Armstrong won it. He was just ahead by two seconds. De La Santa, who we already spotted uh, back there, and Museo from uh, the Mappe team back into third spot, and Jalabert was back into fourth, and Bugno into fifth spot. But Pierre Poli again has been very active in this race so far. Was sixth there, or Max Chandra being in the pack in seventh spot. So it could be a rerun of many of the things we've had in the past with just the breakaway groups getting away, hanging on for a grim death, the big pack coming in. But uh, I don't know. I think perhaps if this lot can settle their differences, we might find uh, that Casa Grande will get to him find himself absorbed by this chase group. We'll have to wait and see. Certainly the man at the back's going to do nothing. It's down to no one that doesn't rise. We went over the top with a bigger pack than this. So I think they've split on the descent. On the descent. So, no, sorry, Mr. Scott, him, you're not. he's not here. Not his territory today. Not familiar territory, though, for Casa Grande. Makes it look so easy. Imagine he, on his own, has got to go one notch faster, or at least equally as quick as the rest behind him. Where he never won on his bike again because of the fact he won this race last year. And he's doing it in a similar style, but he had company last year when he was towing along Merckx and Pierpoli. I think he's just calling up the team car to get a, a quick uh, time check. Well, the Spanish would like a Spanish victor, but they certainly also would be pleased to see somebody who's prepared to have a go on this race. Casa Grande is that has the edge, and the chase is on. We'll have to wait till our cameras get back up again and get some information about who's doing the work, because when you get a big group like that very often, it's a bit too difficult to uh, organise the chase. Here we are, my friends are going to hover up here. It's sort of sprawling when you look out from the helicopters like this, but you can see the time to time the cameras go around and pick up the lovely bay where all the boats are moored. And as you'd expect too, that the uh, fish food here is absolutely marvellous. There's actually some 60 kilometres of coastline on what they call the Gibsokia. It's right from here, from Honda Bare to Satoran, and some lovely uh, sandy beaches. It's not quite here, this particular part, because this is in the estuary area, but there's some, some lovely little villages too inland. But there we are, that gorge. Look at the nice beaches. And some of you have fairly busy with people on holiday too, but uh, a bit later in the year, if you come down maybe in September, October, it's still not too bad at all. There we are. I say 60 kilometers of coastline from Jepex, from Honda Bered to Satoran. Back then with the race. Oh, by the way, if you do get a chance for you to come down here, I don't know what they call it, but there is a, a sport, I, I'll use the word sport, which I saw for the first time in the San Sebastian uh, World Championships a couple of years ago, where great big men lift lumps of lead and they're, they're about half the size of a tea box and it's, they grab this this lump of lead and they they get onto their their, their knees they, they pull up onto their thighs and then they throw it up on their shoulder and they take this lump of lead they'll say like half the size of a tea box across the shoulders and down the other side and then bang it down on the floor and they they work through enormous lumps of lead so much so that i watched them out this chap was doing this great uh, escapade in, in in picking up this big lump of lead in this uh, in this nightclub that it took four people to lift it and put it on a trolley after you finish with it. Unbelievable. <laughs> Not something you should try unless you want to get yourself a horrible hernia. Back with our chase group. In fact, Escartian's there. Lovers, they may cause you tears. Go ahead, really. Well, Casa Grande really has... Uh, taken this race by the scruff of the neck and he's in fact been increasing his leads and he came over the top of that climb uh, and he's now one minute and ten seconds ahead he's only about 40 seconds over the top of the last big climb of the day but he seems to have uh, pressed on with his, his attempt to win this race today the San Sebastian San Sebastian Classic we're looking back then at the chase group which contains some very very big uh, rise indeed this is by the, the second chase group there's one wedge between this big mass now and uh, Casa Grande and that includes some very big hitters indeed so I just wonder if they can close that gap down. That's our biggest group. 
This is not the one which is at 1 minute 15. We'll perhaps go up with our cameras to see them in just a second. Certainly the MAPE team riding very hard indeed here. Going into the World Cup today, Frank Vandenbroek from Coppola, who's riding in this race but very short of race miles, was the overall leader, 199 points. Michael Bogart from uh, Holland riding for the Radbank team was lying second, 170 points. Andrew Chamil is in that chase group, by the way, for the Lotto team, 168 points. Peter van Pettigem for TVM was in fourth spot, 135 points. Sprook not rides a 124. Marcus Berg, Radbank, 101. Andrew Taffy not rides a 100 points. So the, uh, the, the World Cup could <coughs> receive a bit of a shake-up in some respects, but uh, this man, Casagrande, not having scored any points so far. Frank Vandenbroek uh, up to 199 points. Bogart could well move ahead he's what some uh, 29 points adrift and uh, if Bogart manages to finish say into uh, second or third spot then he might not move up but this man Tonkov uh, no threat on the overall classification for the World Cup riding for the MAPE team with a good uh, squad there we are this is on Shamil this is the man who could do well on the World Cup as well 168 points he's got uh, since uh, he opened up by winning the Milan San Remo way back there in March and since then he was 7th in the uh, Tour of Flanders he was 8th in the Paris-Roubaix 17th Liège Baston Liège 19th in the Amstel Gold and so Andre Chamil could benefit uh, if he can just get himself up into second or third that's why the Lotto team are really riding hard in the front they're looking to try and get Mr Chamil in with a good shout for taking over the lead in the World Cup plenty of Lotto riders here to support him and that I think could make life a bit difficult for uh, Casa Grande and there he is on his own. They may, of course, be quite happy just to uh, snatch uh, our chase group because the chase group, which we haven't just seen for a moment or two, includes Escartin and Zula, uh, Atienza, Garcia Casas, and they're about 110 back from this man. So it looks like he might still be able to do what he did uh, last year. That's hang on and stay away from everybody else. He really is ploughing along here. And now Cameron getting pictures for you of Casagrande in full flight once again just to show we will have come all over there and down a bit and that's it you see 16 kilometers to go this little bit towards the end the little conks they've got there they're not too bad they're quite rideable at speed they're not going to sort of bring him to a grinding halt and there's no wind to do or no wind to, to be worried about just a, a quite a nice sort of mellow day with the temperatures up there in the mid 20s not too much sun to cause them to sweat but uh, nevertheless that chase group determined I think you're pulling back but he's looking very strong indeed Casa Grande had quite a quiet year so far this year looking back at what's happened to him so far this season uh, he's not had well he had fourth in the Giro Siracusa in the 28th of February fifth in Tour Adriatico then 18th on a stage in the Tour of Italy and then went on Sorry, 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 this is Francesco. I got the wrong Casa Grande. Start again from the top. Uh, yes, one that uh, stays in the Tour of Switzerland, didn't he? And, and also the overall Tour of Switzerland. He got one there and the Trofo Matteo. So he's into form now. And I think some of this chase group are not going to do much to... Uh, that's Ellie being sucked back in again. And I've got a suspicion that uh, they're about to suck up the group containing... No, they don't. No, they haven't. Still wedged in between. We're not caught up with uh, the the group containing Zula at the moment. Oh, well, coming up towards his birthday. He was born the 14th of September 1970. Gosh, he's got some power, hasn't he? Well, he comes from the same region. I mentioned earlier on that uh, we're in the Basque region. We're celebrating his 85th birthday. Jose Bistegui from the BH uh, team. And during the Tour de France, you may remember we mentioned that it was uh, Bartali's 85th birthday too. Well, that man we've just been looking at, uh, Francesco Casagrande, he comes from the same Tuscany area as Gino Bartali. And I wonder if Gino's watching his local lad on a screen back at them. 43 seconds back then. Well... There's still a chance they could catch him. Depends how determined they are to work.
and certainly the, the Lotto team are going to go some because they've got that interest in Andre Jamil. Uh, I haven't seen Bogart in this group right now, nor Vandenbroek, so it's a chance then for them to start motoring for the World Cup. There is, there's Jamil, lying third in the World Cup, 168 points. He's 31 points behind Frank Vandenbroek from Cofidis. And do a quick check back there. Couldn't see Vandenbroek either, so that'll give Lotto every encouragement to do what they can to pull this man back. Well, he's been around some years now. Like many of the riders from Italy, start off doing a great ride in the amateur tour of Italy, the amateur Giro, the baby Giro, they call it. He won it in 1991, so some eight years ago. So good all-rounder. And now showing that skill and experience and, of course, knowing these roads from having got that stage, that victory in the San Sebastian Classic last year. Makes it look easy, doesn't it? 50 seconds a gap. Well, it's gone back by three seconds, then 51. This GPS, by the way, that's the, the global satellite positioning thing, and uh, it doesn't always, I understand, take into account some of the curves in the road. It does it in a straight line, so in reality, by going round the curves, it might be a little bit longer, but please don't blame me if I got it wrong. I was just told that by somebody, but this is our chase group, including Andre Chamille. Well, getting in toward the back end now of the race for Casa Grande. Big crowd of turnout here. They saw him win this race last year when he towed uh, Axel Merckx and uh, Pierre Poli in toward the finish. Now he's doing it all on his own. But that group's still less than a minute behind him. And uh, what, with about 12, 13 kilometers to go toward the finish, it is catchable. But they've got to work hard. This man is so determined now to, to get this success today. Didn't get to ride the Tour de France when his team were not allowed in. They had a problem with the hemocrat level for one of their riders, uh, something like about just over two weeks before the start of the Tour de France, and their, their team was taken off the list, and now I think they've got a, a, a few scores to, to settle here. The Mappe team with their Tonkov just behind are really starting to go. Some Jufo just there in the red as well, not far back. The Swiss rider in the red for Psycho. There's some good talent here. Depends who's prepared to have a go. Mappe have, have taken over. We saw the uh, Lotto team riding hard for Chamillo. Well, Mappe... Really giving it some stick they've got. Uh, Taffy is the best placed rider from the Mappe team, not riding today in the overall World Cup. He's seventh on the World Cup uh, series. And Jan Museo, uh, way back into 12 spots on the World Cup series. So in reality, they must be riding for just to get the victory because they're not going to do as well as Mr. Chamil will do to get the, uh, uh, the lead in the World Cup. But a long way to go still. We've got the Hamburg uh, race next weekend. Then we've got the Championship of Zurich. Then we've got the Paris Tour. And then we've got the big one to finish off, the Tour of Lombardy. And still Casa Grande, 54 seconds. He's in fact going a little bit further away. Well, Jufo on his own as far as Psycho is concerned. Unless he's determined to try and win this on his own, pull that one back. Can't see that he's got... Any other reason to drive this one along a bit? He's gone a bit too quick. I don't think Dufo's got his contract for Psycho again re-signed for one if not two years, so at least since he's come back with suspension he's shown great courage and uh, great tenacity and now he's got himself a contract to go. But this man Casa Grande really rolling along here. Just for local interest, way back in 1993, rode the, the Tour of Britain. Must have been the Kellogg's Pro Tour in those days when he finished 14th overall. So Casa Grande determined to get it twice on the trot. The only other riders that won this race uh, twice on the trot was La Jareta, won it in 1981 and 1982. 10Ks to go. It's still possible then. We're just what, uh, under a minute separating himself from the, the group behind, which does not include uh, Lance Armstrong, who's just been tail off on the climb of the last big mountain of the day. And so that big climb there of the Yescabel certainly once again has proved the break point for so many riders. Oh, it's coming down, and, and this man, Dufo, is doing all the work. It really has come down all of a sudden.
And I hope that he's going to persist with it as well. That's Bettina that's going with it. They've got 10k. Oh, it's coming down. There's got to be surely less than that 50 seconds they gave us before. There's Bettini just behind. I think he's not going to do too much, though, for the, the Mape squad. Uh, Jufo and uh, Bettini riding along here and still Casa Grande on his own. Well, Jufo's been doing a lot of work. He's looking around for the rest to come on and take uh, part in this, but they don't seem to be too bothered about it. I don't quite know why they're not getting stuck in. In fact, no, it's, it's Petito, my mistake. 122 is Petito. He's looking back for Jufo, who's in the main pack. And still, that gives a chance in nine minutes to go for Casa Grande to stay out there. His team car coming up and giving him some encouragement. They can't give him any drinks here because they've gone through that last uh, 20 kilometres. They're only giving encouragement to him. So it's Petito from Psycho, not Jufo. Jufo is, is the team that is back in that group. So again, it's got to be these uh, lads from the Lotto team to drive this one forward. And who are just behind? Doesn't seem to be doing too much work at the moment. So the spirited attempt then for Petito to drive it forward on behalf of Juva has come to nothing. This will play right in the hands of uh, Casa Grande because the chase is all very uh, fragmented. There's no sort of complete and steady chase going on. Look, you see how they're looking back and saying, no, it's your turn, no, it's my turn. And so, in reality, now then, what's going on the far side there? Well, they are independently going, although this is Fincato having a go. And this is not the way to build up a positive chase by any means. Bogart's in this break, that group behind, by the way. I mentioned that Arnold Chamil is in there. With Bogart also in there, there must be perhaps team tax are going to take place because Bogart with Rabank, I haven't seen any other rider from the Rabank team doing much work with them. So perhaps the, uh, uh, the, the Lotto team are saying, we're not going to tow Mr. Bogart up because there are two points separating Bogart and Chamil on the World Cup. So as Casa Grande isn't in with a shout in the World Cup overall, perhaps the, 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 what's going on here is who's going to be second rather than who's going to be first. Look, look. See, Bogart won't come through in, in the orange and the white. I don't understand this. If they got stuck in, they could probably go in for first place, but I don't think anyone wants to tell the opponents. Some of the riders will just come through, then sit there, just ease back and won't do anything else. Just waiting for someone else to come through. That's... Uh, Salvatore from vaulted out. He's still going strong, isn't he? Casa Grande is taking advantage of the fact there's indecision behind him. And it's exactly what happened last year. They came over the top of the climb. Uh, they could almost see them on the descent when he and Merckx and Pierre Poli went away. And he, he just hung on for grim death going in towards the finish. And he survived that one. He might well do it again today. Well, he gets 100 points for if he gets into first place, 70 points back for second and 50 for third. And uh, so Bogart and Chamil will be fighting it out because I uh, haven't seen Van der Broek in that chase group. So then Chamil's lads have gone back on the front again. Whether they like it or not, they're going to have to tow the uh, Rabobank rider with them. So Chamil in there, one of the oldest riders in the race. Very crafty and plenty of talent too. Like one, two, three, maybe four. Yeah, at least three of the Lotto team riders here riding on their new GT bicycles, which were produced just in time for the Tour de France. And this is the man then still out there, Casa Grande. Hasn't relented, hasn't missed a beat. We're all the way through. Well, it takes a lot of courage to do what he did at the top of that climb. In fact, going up the climb to go away, catch our breakaway groups. And 15 men were originally clear. Bit by bit, the lead came down until in the end on that climb up towards the top uh, with 30 k's to go uh, Casa Grande forced his way through and off he went running back in towards San Sebastian the run in by the way the last kilometer is right alongside the beach and uh, there's a bit of a sort of left hand kink before he comes in but that's just inside the one kilometer to go and there they are well they're motoring but not enough at the moment
look at the speed. And he's on his own. It's not the most delectable part of the countryside, is it? It's often what you get, the, the docks and the high-rise flats and things aren't, aren't all that pretty, but uh, nevertheless, when he gets down towards the, the beach at San Sebastian along there, that's, that's a lot better. It's quite, quite nice, in fact. And a big crowd waiting to welcome him in. Can he do it again? 1 metre 72, weighs 63 kilograms. And now look at the power of the Lotto Rise on the front. Determined they are because, say, Chamil, 168 points in the World Cup, 170 points of Bogart. Frank Vandenbroek's been shelled out the back. We could see quite a change then coming up in the World Cup because Chamil could take the lead as he did when he won the Milan San Remo. If this lot could just close that gap down, or get Chamil into second spot and Bogart way up the pace. I'm sure this is going to be uh, of great news to people in Belgium because although it looks like Casagrande might get the stage, the, the, the win today, here he is still out there on his own, these final five kilometres. Uh, the way that the uh, Lotto team are coming at him, it could be that uh, Chamil might take over the lead in the World Cup because he's got to finish ahead of Bogart. We'll watch out for that if uh, they don't catch this man in that sprint just to see if uh, Bogart manages to uh, get ahead of Chamil. But uh, looks now inside his final five kilometres. Uh, this fellow here on your screen, Casagrande, could be riding in to yet his second victory in the San Sebastian Classic. Well, he showed he's coming back into form in the Tour of Switzerland. We showed you that on Eurosport when he won a stage and went on to win it overall as well. Back in the main pack, so many people here just tried to pull him back, didn't quite make it. And they're just now allowing the Etolano, who must be very disappointed again that he's not up there with a shout to get it today. And the Spanish public must be asking themselves, where's this man going to? And the answer, I suppose, is anywhere in the Tour of Spain as Bogart starts to move through. Now, this fellow here, Bogart, the orange and white, has got to try and track down. If we go past that, look like Max Chandra on the right-hand side. He's got to try and track down uh, Andre Chamil. And Chamil is up with his little... Uh, gang in front here, they're with the black shorts and the red here. This is the Lotto lot with uh, Lotto lot. Uh, the Lotto boys here with 4Ks to go. They are going to play out their own game because it looks like we're going to see this man roll in to get the victory but behind it's who's going to take the lead in the World Cup. So we're seeing two races within one here. One, Casagrande who took off on that climb up towards the top of the last uh, big mountain of the day and over the top he went over the Yeski Bell and he's then gone on his own for something like that 40 kilometre the gap still 52 seconds as one by one the Lotto boys look beginning to drop back there that one chap who's just been doing all the work uh, for uh, his teammate to Chimil just seems to have blown a gasket and gone 51 seconds certainly inside this final four kilometre they're not going to catch him that's for sure Back then with Tomkov. Well, three commits to go. You see how flat it is here. There's nothing to disturb the action at all. And it looks like Max Shand is beginning immensely to move forward. Tomkov's still riding hard in the front. Can't quite comprehend why he's doing that. Because uh, then I know the Mappe boys are jumping all over the place now. I think Ed, Ed Ramford himself for second spot. Now, this is where uh, the Lotto people have got to be very careful indeed because they want to make sure that Chamil finishes ahead of Bogart. But if Bogart uses one of the stepping stones of these riders going down the road, all the work they've done uh, could be to no avail. Bogart riding in the orange and white uh, colours for the Rabobank team. Lotto 131 is Chamil's number if you want to spot him come through. But back in with our leader. Well, he's been fairly active all the way through, has the uh, young Bettini. Normally rides for uh, Bartoli, but Bartoli's still suffering with that uh, smashed knee that he had in the Tour of Germany. Comes to ending of Ulrich, by the way, and his team managers, by the way, have said very clearly that Ulrich has to ride the uh, Tour of, uh, of Spain, which we're going to give you uh, live on Eurosport. And Ulrich is sort of puffing and panting and humming and ahhing about it, but uh, he's got to do something this year. And I think if he doesn't ride the Tour of Spain and do a decent ride, then he's going to have to really look at his contract because so far he's done not very much this year. And so he's got to really get stuck in. I'm not lecturing the poor fellow, but somehow uh, I think the Tour of Spain is going to be a fascinating one for it. Depends also, Pantani's supposed to be down to ride how his form is after uh, not riding very much since the um, since the tour of italy so we've got all that yet to come 
but not out of bed. In Spain today, in fact, the Basque region, San Sebastian, this looks like being a cracking win yet again. The second time for Casa Grande. Won it last year when he towed Merckx and Pepe in to finish. Now he's doing all of this. This is the left hand. got to about one kilometre to go. Alongside the beach. There in the distance. That's it. 1K to go. Lovely straight run in. Very similar finish to that which we had in the World Championships when uh, Brochard... Uh, won that one for France, Brochard riding for Festina, watches in the race today, not in contention, not in that chase group at all. So, the big thing is, out of that chase group, what's going to happen with the battle between Andre Chamil of Lotto and Bogart from Rabobank. Certainly I'm motoring along now. Well, he's got it, hasn't he? He's stitched up nicely, 500 metres. No doubt that he's going to get this one. That's it. That's his. Just down the road, safe from where we had the World Championship finish. A bit nearer to the seafront. We were tucked a bit round the uh, uh, road, a bit further up to the left-hand side. But certainly coming in, there's no doubt about it. For the second year in succession, he's going to get this one. But uh, we're going to watch out and see what happens in the chase group behind us. Casa Grande doing tremendous ride. He, he took off just the right time on that uh, final climb of the day. He rode so well. What a measured success then. He went over the Alto de Esquivel uh, in the lead. He maintained that lead through towards the finish. He never had much more than about what, 40 seconds at the top of the climb. And he never hovered much more than between 40 and 50 seconds all the way down in towards the finish. But now he's got the stage. He's got the success of the San Sebastian Classic, but who's going to get the placings behind in particular? Who's going to take over the World Cup for lead? Watch out then for the Lotto team begin to move through here and look out for the orange and white. They're not right on the side. You see, look in the background is uh, Bogard, but uh, they've sent the men down the road to get some of the maximum points of the Lotto team, and they whiz through here. Orange on right, the right-hand side, Bogart starting to go for this one, it could it make life do for Chamil, who's on the left-hand side. Chamil then coming up on the left, Bogart on the right, and they go to the line. I think Chamil just finished ahead of Bogart, but I need a photo finish to see that one. As they came through at the finish, I was more concerned, not about the individual Lotto man who came up to on his own, but what happened further back on the right-hand side, it looked like Bogart may have just been snitched to the line by Chamil, so Chamil might have the World Cup lead, but Casagrande is the winner today. Well, there's still groups of riders to come in after that to finish when Casa Grande romped in to get this to victory. But I'm going to wait and see what happened in that uh, runoff for the second place. Not to see who was second, but to see what happened between uh, Chamil and Bogart. Because going into the World Cup round today, uh, Bogart 170 points, Andre Chamil 168. I think they were sprinting probably around about uh, fifth and sixth spot. It may be fourth and fifth, but uh, quite a, a stack of points there available. And uh, we'll have to just wait for that one to come up on our slow motion and confirmation to come up uh, over our headphones but certainly the success today going to Casa Grande winning the uh, San Sebastian San Sebastian for the second year in succession we wait now with bated breath to see who's taken the lead in the World Cup so hang out there don't leave us stay with us on Eurosport I'm an engineer by definition that means I'm fat well the crowd waiting with anxious bated breath for the result in connection with the World Cup overall but no doubt about it Casa Grande winning today and this lovely part of the world then these lovely beaches here San Sebastian three beaches La Concha, Ondarata and La Zariola and the beach is empty to see the finish today as uh, coming in to the line we're just looking back at the later riders coming in over three minutes down I think uh, Armstrong just came in with that little group so this is our main chase group imagine over three minutes down when they went over the top of that climb I think about one and a half to two minutes back to them so just give you some idea of the gap that was opened up by uh, Francesco Castagrande as he rode in towards the finish today not too much sunshine about this part of the world but a nice mellow day for the bike riders and I suppose that many of them now back in action in the World Cup looking forward to next uh, week's race at Hamburg and somehow I think Mr Ulrich has got to get the proverbial out and do a good ride uh, next week otherwise people will be asking questions looking back again at the slow motion of Casa Grande getting his second uh, successive victory in the San Sebastian San Sebastian Classic 230 kilometers in all and the time you can see on your screen coming up just five and a quarter hours of racing 
quick look back at the records from last year. You might ask me, well, what was his time last year? Uh, over a somewhat similar quarter. I think about two kilometres longer last year. And uh, he ran out in it last year. And somewhere here, I have the time for you, if I can find it. No. Ah, no, this is what I want. That's second spot. Don't worry about that. That, well, yes. I would say that um, Tamil has now got the uh, World Cup lead because there is his teammate going across. That's second. Watch again. That's third, Bettina. That's fourth, Tamil. Camesso is into fifth spot. Keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling because Boga wasn't there. So that means Tamil now has got uh, four spots. Fifth goes to Camesso and looks like six comes on this side yep and there in seventh spot is uh, Bogart and looks like uh, Max Chandry into eighth on the far side so I would say from that that we have now got uh, Tamil back in the leaders jersey on the World Cup having uh, got that position fourth spot overall in fact Casa Grande's time I've now found it for you four hours 42 minutes and 45 seconds last year for 232 kilometers so a somewhat slower race this year but still the result was the same as far as he was concerned as we look back down there uh, the Brugger Figueres it was not to bet any my mistake Tamil for, for